Here we go. Um, yo, this is this is one of them interviews. I, I struggled on whether I should even have this conversation, and I struggled for obvious reasons. Um, but anybody who knows me and knows my background, you know I come from that bad boy entertainment system. Um, you know, that has been part of my life for, I don't know, 20 plus years, at least. And this is a gentleman that comes out of that same system. He's also somebody who's been very vocal about his time being in the system. And it hasn't been always in the most positive light. So I struggle with the conversation because on one hand, I'm obviously friends and um, to an extent family with the owner, Sean Diddy Combs. Mark, I know you have had your differences. And the reason I decided to have this conversation is because there's a way to do this intelligently, maturely, and allow you to speak your mind in a way that maybe I don't understand or people who've heard you haven't quite got all the information. So welcome to the show. Right. Bad boy, ex-bad boy recording you, artist, Mark you. Curry. Mark, what up? <laughs> hey, hey, what up, friend? what up, brother? Yeah, and, and, and for the record, what this up, is my friend? longtime friend and brother right here. So, Mark, I know I gave the formal intro, but you know, let, let's just do me and you. Yeah. All right, presidential Rolex, presidential suite. What's going on? That, that that's, right, that's right. That's right. Yo, good to see you, though, Mark. That's you're looking that's good. That's you're out here. You're doing your thing. It's good to see you. You're aging well. So, so. You know, before we really get deep into this thing, you know, I, I think my, I didn't realize you was from up top originally. Like, yeah, where? From, where? Yep, yep, yep. New York. Where, where are you from originally? Jersey, huh? My family's. Um, I'm from New, in Harlem, really. Um, 130th in Lexington, and all the wards. You know, I come from up there, like we, uh, the wards, like my, 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 they, we do the, the Harlem, we can cook for people up there in Harlem, my, my cousins, you know what I'm saying? But I'm from New Jersey, Teaneck, New Jersey. That's where I was. But when I was, when I was with Bad Boy, everybody thought I was from LA. No, you, you, I don't know you want to know, I always thought you was from LA and then moved to Atlanta. I, I never knew that you had roots up in New York, New nah. Jersey, tri state area. Oh yeah, tri-state. That's what I am. Tri-state all day. You know what I'm saying? I went to Teaneck. I went to uh, Benjamin Franklin. I went to Lowell Elementary, Teaneck High. Um, well, that's the year I, I came out of there. But then I moved to Mississippi, and then from Mississippi I moved to Georgia. Then that's when I ran into you know the friends, and then I went to California, and then that's when I got signed. But the whole time I was really from um, of New York. The whole time, New, New Jersey. How how long you been rhyming, Mark? I've been rhyming ever since, man, since Brucey B. J J suicide. D -d 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 you know, Brucey B. Um, man, I've been rhyming ever since Sugar Hill Gang. So, so is rapping? Is that something you always Sugar wanted to do? Um, you know, when I first started rapping, it wasn't something that I really had set out to do. It, it was just that I was doing music and people heard like one day Puff heard my music and then he wanted to sign me to the label. But I, I didn't set out to really be like, I'm going to go look for a record deal or nothing like that. I was just doing music. You know what I'm saying? I, I wasn't trying to do it to, to 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 get a deal. I was a deal myself. I just wanted to get it. You know, we had a record label called Checkmate. You understand me? And um, one of my friends, D1. In the book, we call him D Wayne, but D One, we had the uh, the, the label check, uh, Checkmate Records, and then um, that's when I signed the Puff from there, and, it, and it, it just went down from right there. And he knew, you know, he knew um, 
you knew who he knew. Okay, I, I knew, but, but we have, you know, the audience doesn't know. And the reason I want to be specific in this conversation uh, is because there's so much that, um, you know, has been put out there year over year. So let's just fill in the blanks. Uh, and, and just for just for the record, all right. Come on, by the by the time you got mm -hmm. signed to Bad Boy, Puff was Puff. He might not have been, you know, the Puff Daddy right. with Ciroc or Revolt, but this was a young multi-millionaire executive in the business. So it's not like you just started rhyming. All of a sudden, Puff heard your, your demo tape or he heard your music. Somebody got your music to him. Who was that person? The person that got my music to him was a guy named Mac. Mac. And you know what I'm saying? And he happened to have been one of Puff good friends. And then he was like, yo, Puff want to sign you. So then, um, and then there was another one, D1. It was me and D1. And then D1 and Mac was friends. But then he had called D1 because me and D1 had a whole game plan going. And then he was like, yo, Puff want to sign you as an artist. And then I, at that time, I thought that was, that would be a, a, a very wise decision for me to make because Puffy, was in the in the in the he was in control mm -hmm. in the light at that time. Okay. So, so it was a go, go great ahead, I'm business so sorry. Move. Yeah, it was a great business move. It was, you know, we thought about it and was like, yo, it seemed like, you know, we wouldn't have to go through as much with the struggle as as far as trying to break in a new label and we can be with someone who already has their foot in the door and can and assist us in helping some good business decisions and, you know, help accomplish some of these things we was trying to do. That was the main decision. That was the reason why I signed with, with, with him. But even when we say sign with him, I got signed to a production deal. So that means I had to sign to the production company first. And then once I signed to the production company, that's when he signed me okay. to the production company. But then at the- No, go, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. That's like a lot of- there's a lot of artists that I, at that time when I, when I was coming on the Bad Boy, I wasn't the only artist that was signed through a production company, you know. So I was signed through a production company, and then I got the Bad Boy through that. So that means, like, in order for me to discuss business with Puff, I had to discuss with the production company first. Then they talked to Puff, and then Puff would talk to the major label. I couldn't talk nothing to the major label. You know what I'm saying? Which might be in Atlantic or Universal, whatever it may have been at that time. Understood. Yeah. But I had that production. Understood. Yeah. How long was you yeah. how long was you signed to the production mm -hmm. deal before you got your contract with Bad Boy? We we was probably going about two years, two years a year, because at the time we were still producing music. So only thing I would do is sit and I we lit, I, you know, we had a studio on Hollywood and Kawanga uh, in, uh, in, in in Hollywood, so I would stay at the studio and just make music and, and take a shower at Bally's or go home. But I was it was like two years. We was just doing music. And I think I had probably, man, maybe about a good 20, 50 songs at the time. And um, Puff was just listening to him. D-Mac, I mean, you know, Mac was sending them to him. He was liking them. And then, um, but it was, a, it was a while. But before then, I've been doing music all in Atlanta. You know, we, it, you know, I come when I came to Atlanta. That's when I went to high school with Dallas Austin and Divine Stevens, and you know, we went to Lakeshore High School. One of the most crazy things is one time um, I was going with Puff, and we was going over to Dallas Austin house, and he has this house off of Northside Drive, it's like a spaceship. And we went to the house, and when we walked in the house, and I'm sitting there, dying, it was Puff didn't even know Dallas knew me like me and Dallas went to school together. You know what I'm saying? It was just a small world, but that's when I came here. I went to school, and bam, that's, you know, and nobody really ever knew I was even from here like that. You know, but that's how I got signed, President Rolex Suite. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.